Welcome to MSPTDA video number 36. In this video, we want to see how to create a Power Query sample file as a parameter for a custom function. Now, back in Excel Magitrix 1621, also in MSPTDA number 9, we took 12 crosstab sheets and converted them into a pivot table using Power Query. And in that video, we used a custom function. But when the custom function code changed, we had to manually go in and fix it by using a parameter for the sample file. Anytime we change our code, it's automatically reflected in the custom function. Now you can download this file and follow along. Now in this workbook, we have 12 weeks of data. On each sheet, we have a column with sales rep and products. We have dates across the top. We have totals in the last column. And we have totals in rows. This is not how we should keep data if we want to do data analysis. And yet, this is a common scenario. And it is how some people keep their data. But no problem. In order to get this into one proper data set so we can make a pivot table, we'll use Power Query, a parameter, and a custom function. Now I've selected cell J2. Here's the formula we learned how to create back in Excel Magitrix 1626 that gives us a dynamic file path. Now we need this file path to get at all the objects for us all the sheets in this Excel workbook. And we need to import it into Power Query. I've already used the define name feature to name that cell. Now I come up to data. There's Power Query getting transformed. And I import it into the editor with the From Table button. We're going to rename this query, all data in one table. We x out the second and third step. We don't need them. Now this is a table, and I want to do a two-way lookup to get at that file path. So after all of that code, we use our positional index operator to get the first row. Remember, Power Query is base 0. And then our field access operator to look up the column. When I hit Enter, I've extracted the file path. Now up in the formula bar, I'm going to click the f of x to add a new step. There's the previous step name. And to get the contents from that file path, we use file.contents. And when I close parentheses and hit Enter, we see up in the formula bar that Excel.workbook automatically got put on the outside of file.contents. File.contents actually got the Excel file. But Excel.workbook went into that file and pulled out each one of those cross-tabulated data sheets. If we click in the data column off to the side, we can see each one of those objects. Now the kind column tells us what kind of object. We could see define name and sheet. Over here, this is the name of the object. Now I want to come over here and hit F2 to rename this. Now our next goal in the kind column is to filter so we only accept sheets when we import. And over here, since that's a sheet, I need to filter out the report. Now we could do two different filters, but we have a consistent pattern for how we name our sheets. Each one of the sheets is for a different week, and we always start with capital W. So up in the filter, we're going to use text filters. Begins with, notice it says keep rows where items begin with capital W. Click OK. I'll rename this. Now over here on the left, we have one query. And this will be our final table where we take all of these tables and combine them into one. But we have to close and load this, build our function, and then come back to this query. So we're going to go to Close and Load, Close and Load 2, Only Create a Connection, click OK. Now we can see our query over here. Let's double click to open it back up. On the left, we need to duplicate this. Right click Duplicate. I'm going to immediately hit F2. This will be called A01 Sample Sheet and Enter. This is going to be the one query where we extract one table. And that will be our starting point to build our custom function. So up in the formula bar, I click F of x. That's the name of the previous step. We're going to extract the first row from the column name Data and Enter. Now we don't want this step, so I'm going to exit out. I'm going to rename this. This is going to be our one sample file that we will use in a parameter and then use to build the actual custom function. We need to close and load, close and load to, only create a connection, click OK. Double click to open up. Select the query on the left. 
And in the Home Ribbon tab under Parameters, we're going to say Drop Down, New Parameter. Now we're going to name this B02 Parameter, give it a description. I wrote a description. Now that check mark for required will show up in the advanced editor code. Type any will also show up in the code. The current value, A01 sample sheet. Now this will show up as text, but we'll edit it in the advanced editor. I actually do not know how to directly pull that query in. So if anyone knows how to do it through this dialog box, which I've always had trouble with, leave a comment below. I'm going to click OK. But it is a parameter. We're going to make this box not available because we really want the parameter pointing towards that query. Right click the parameter, Advanced Editor. We're first going to change this from text to an actual query, meta. And then the square brackets means this is a record. Is parameter query equals true? Type equals any? Is parameter required true? I want to add another element in this record. Binary identifier equals, and then the name of the query in double quotes, comma. And I better spell this right. Now when I click Done, that will be grayed out. We're actually pulling straight from that sample file. Now F2 here, I'm going to copy this because the next query is going to start with this parameter as the source. Right click, New Query, Other, down to blank equals control v and enter. I don't need this change type. By the way, file options, query options down here under data load and we can uncheck this. Automatically detect column types. Click okay. So that won't automatically pop up. We're going to name this something like C03 build function. Now the first thing we want to do is I'm going to trim this column just in case there's some extra spaces. With the column selected, I go up to Transform, Format, and Trim. I'm going to rename each one of these steps. Now we want to promote the first row. In the upper left, I click the drop down, Use First Row as Headers. Now from this column, I need to get a separate column with Sales Rep and Product. Then we need to do things like remove the totals, remove this null record. And there's also a total column over here that we are going to use in our transformation, but we'll remove it near the end. Now the first thing we want is I'm going to use from the total per product that null. That's the whole row where the sales rep name is in the first column. I'm going to use that null to pull out the sales rep and the product. So add column, conditional column. This will be called sales rep. If total per product equals null, then I want a column sales rep. Otherwise, null. Click OK. I renamed the step. Now I want to right click, fill down. Now we have the sales rep name next to each one of these numbers. So when we unpivot, each one of these numbers will have the correct sales rep. Now we're going to go back up to Add Column, Conditional Column. This will be called Product. If the total equals Null, we're using the same logical test, but this time we'll say, please give me a null. Otherwise, the column should be sales rep. That'll pull out the product. Click OK. Now we're going to use that null right there to eliminate this row. So drop down, uncheck null. Next, we want to go to the first column, and we need to get rid of the totals. We're going to filter, text filters, does not contain the word total. Click OK. Now we don't need this column or the total column. So I hold Control click, right click, remove. Now we have our two columns and all of the numbers. So I select Sales Rep and Product, right click, unpivot other columns. Up in the formula bar, I want to use table.unpivot to name the columns and Enter. And the final step is we will change the data types. Now there's all of the steps for our custom function. And the beauty of the process we're going through is if I need to edit this later, I can come back and use the user interface rather than how we manually did it in the advanced editor in the last video. Now the fact that we used a parameter here, we're allowed to right click and use Create Function. 
if we did not have a parameter, right click, create function, it would tell us no parameter. So now we right click, create function. We're going to call this. That's our name. Click OK. We want to come down to the sample sheet, right click, move to group. We want it with our function. And there we have the four steps to get to our function. Now we come down to our final table. We need to convert these using the custom function. So we say invoke custom function. That's the column name. There's our function. And we can select. And sure enough, the data column has our cross tab sheet data. Click OK. And now we have each one of our tables transformed. Now we're going to come up to the formula bar, click the f of x. And we need to extract that proper data set column. So we use our field access operator. There's the field name and Enter. We have our tables as a list. So now we can use table.combine to append each one of those tables into a single proper data set. And now we can simply click Close and Load. There's our final table. Whoops, I forgot to close and load this one. Here's a great trick. I made a mistake. It dumped it as a new sheet. Right click, delete the sheet. And now it's connection only. Let's come down here, right click. Load to. We want to load it to a pivot table cache. Cell A1 on the report sheet. Click OK. Sales rep down to rows. Product down to column. Sales. Oh no, we made a mistake. These are not sales. These are units. Now we can simply double click build function. And again, last video, we had to edit the code, copy in the advanced editor, and then, and then go and paste in the function. But now, I'm going to go back to unpivot up in the formula bar. This should be units. Enter. Change type. We're going to double click and call this units and Enter. We also want to convert this to a whole number. It'll ask us to replace current. Click Replace. Now the beautiful thing is, if you go look at the M code advanced editor for the function, it's all reflected in our function. Click Done. Click Close and Load. Right click the pivot table, refresh. Now we can drag units. And there's our finished pivot table report from all of these cross-tab data sheets. All right, so in this video, we created a sample sheet, then converted it to a parameter, built our function based on the parameter, and then simply right-click, create our function. Then we came down and invoked our custom function. And when we were all done, we loaded it to our pivot table report. All right, if you want to learn more about M code, here's a video here. And if you want to see the manual way we did this, check out this video.